Hello everybody and welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1017 and this is the second straight chapter where Oda has dedicated a portion of Otama's plan and making it come to fruition. Otama's plan was obviously to announce to the gifters that were affected by the Kibidongo which they did not know about until this chapter to help them out in the fight against Kaido and after this chapter mission accomplished which I feel like obviously takes away the tension but also it's kind of like that pendulum effect like it, it swings one way the momentum swings one way for the it swings of Luffy and the allies of the samurai and the straw hats and, and then it swings back in favor of Kaido which I feel like it's only a matter of time until that happens in this chapter not only did Otama get a message through which has a lot of gifters and pleasures switch sides from Kaido to the Alliance with Momonosuke also getting away from Kaido and away from his it looks like he's outside and also Luffy obviously being helped out of the water by the Heart Pirates so things are looking in favor of the Straw Hats but I feel like it's only a matter of time until Oda switches that back around in favor of Kaido probably with what happens with whatever happens with Kaido and Yamato so we start off with a cover page and we actually get a buggy which is pretty cool and he's being built like a puzzle by a chimpanzee which is also hilarious and it kind of makes me wonder what's going on. the last time we saw a buggy he was being surrounded by a bunch of marines as the Shishibukai system was abolished thanks to Fujitora apparently it's the geisha that's playing the guitar with the the eye mask so I feel like it's only a matter of time until we go elsewhere find out what's happening with the rest of the world primarily obviously maybe find out what happened with the Shijibukai what happened with Sabo, BV, what happened at the Reverie because especially with what gets revealed by the end of this chapter I feel like Oda may be close to going elsewhere if and when he decides to close up one at three so we start off the chapter immediately with Atama on the about to give the commands but before then is interrupted by a queen which is a hilarious because it looked like she got knocked out by Conqueror's Haki until Usopp and Nami arrived by the way shout out to Usopp and Nami and Sanji for helping her out so Bao Hong is also still incapacitated by Usopp's plant so we to give the word out so everybody can hear it we also get to find out what's going on elsewhere with the Tubby Robo and the Straw Hat we focus switch focus to the castle interior fourth floor with Jinbei and Who's Who, we find out that a bunch of subordinates under Who's Who, the cat, I guess the cat subordinates, are surrounding Jinbei. So these are not one v one. It favors Kaido until Otama gives the command. Then it switches back around. It looks it also looks like Jinbei gets shot in the in the back by what by the girl. So I'm hoping what what happens when we get to these fights in the anime because it's been cut away so many times. I'm hoping that the because we've gotten so many philistines which by the way i don't mind in the end have looked phenomenal so i hope toei actually expands more upon these fights especially with frankie going up against sasaki and jinbei against who's who maybe they'll expand upon nami against ulti as well because we don't there was a chunk of that fight we missed because we know nami took a headbutt to the skull as well as usopp did two of them in fact go to where jack and inarashi are at and i feel like inarashi is probably gonna get some help as well it's like kind of foreshadowing that some of these fights are not going to be 1v1 just because Inuyasha cannot is not in any condition to take on Jack. Plus, Jack has his hybrid form, so it's only a matter of time. So I feel like he's going to get some backup soon. I I thought it might be Nekomamushi, but considering he's heading to where Parasparo's at, maybe not. Get, and then Atomic's the speech. You got Usopp and Nami trying to cheer up, so you can do it. Everybody who hate the Kibidango. I do like how Queen tr tried to do something, but it was too little too late. So Luffy and Momonosuke and his friends and his retainers, you're on their side now, so help them out. That's kind of cool that Heart Pirates are trying to help out Luffy. You got Momonosuke and Shinobu. Look, it looks like they're outside because Momonosuke is like, we're so high up. And obviously he needs to get over that fear of heights, so maybe he's going to switch into dragon form pretty soon. And then Atama's like, take, let's take down Kaido. And then that's where obviously the switch is flipped and everybody else is under the influence. We also see Daibuko is also taking care of business, which is pretty cool. Gorilla Briscola is also helping out. 
now obviously the numbers increased for obviously the alliance now a scene back at with seat with the cyberpol agent where they're talking about the numbers and how they switched again the gifters are tearing down through the third floor so then that's where queen gets pissed off and he's like he's about to attack otama nami and usap and then out of nowhere it comes sanji with Kalia strike which i love because obviously it's more expansion on sanji versus queen i was wondering where sanji was because we saw him in a panel but we didn't see him w with queen we also sanji take notice of a time in the previous chapter so now it comes back into the forefront then queen like judge's son you bastard and more importantly we get some in more insight into like i guess germa's background with queen because sanji's like i suppose you're part of that insane research team then queen says you mean mads that's ancient history so i'm i can only assume that involved fega pan judge and queen the techno parts are part of his body so that makes a whole lot of sense we still need more exposition so hopefully through this fight we'll get that then he goes into hybrid form which is pretty cool like he looks like he does in his base only obviously his scales are different his skin's different kind of like kaido but the cool thing here is like he's you see a sword he's carrying and you also see like he's got his mechanical arms and his mechanical tail which i think is pretty cool his base structure is pretty simple but i do like the mechanical parts added to it so that's what's cool you got the underlegs of queen trying to hype him up because obviously queen's in his hybrid form now so let's paint the picture here so queen in his dino brachiosaurus form tanked two attacks from Big Mom. He got he eventually got back up and Brachio Obama to Big Mom. That was in his dino form. So Queen is no joke. So they're gonna raise the stakes against Sanji. Now I'm not sure that we're getting hybrid form Queen against Sanji. I'm just a little surprised it's happening this soon. So you can either chop that to one or two things. Either Queen got pissed off the moment Sanji interfered with at trying to attack Atama because obviously she's now switch, made people switch sides with the gifters or you could take that as a testament to Sanji forcing Queen into hybrid form so no I need to take this seriously now this guy's no joke the thing is Sanji hasn't put his raid suit on and I'm wondering if he is like I said this many times like as as cool as it would be to see Sanji in his raid suit ultimately the, the power the power that Sanji gets has to come from Sanji himself not the raid suit so i'm fine with that sanji probably will put on the raid suit even while queen is in his hybrid form sanji doesn't pay any attention to that he's like focusing back on chopper because obviously and then we get to see the side effects of what happens with i guess with, and to be honest it's kind of disappointing because it's a re re it's reverse of what happens with i guess the kids at punk has because chopper's mini size now because you actually get described as baby chopper baby grants chopper i don't know why he just titled that but maybe a complete reference to luffy pre time skip after he used gear third because after he used gear third he went he decreased his size into a child so he went he got smaller so maybe it's the same thing here so that's pretty funny especially with the change in dialogue like chop of the way chopper was speaking like oh you betcha i'm right as rain just keep your eyes on the prize when does chopper talk like that so yagi and tristan take care of sorrow he saw it looks like he's about to be patched up because chopper's like there's a super recovery drug i can't manage so taking the drug that gives chop kiss to zoro takes away its pain i, I assume temporarily in fact but zoro's not listening to that he's like yo just give me the drug i don't care what happens it won't even matter if, if i can fight zoro's about to take that drug and to recover so he can get up on his fight with king so that's gonna happen pretty soon and we go back to jinbei and who's who which one of the biggest reveals of if not the biggest reveal we've gotten because of what it represents and how huge this is jimbei uses fishman karate breakfast which is pretty cool like i said these fights in the anime with the top tier animations gonna look awesome who's who does devil is tempest kit which is simple which is similar to cypher pole which right there's a red flag and also an iron body so the six powers that usually used by the government officials as jimbei points out a rogue member of the cypher pole secret intelligence agency breaking out of prison so he got locked up because he messed up so apparently he messed up with a mission so it was, it was in the shadows work of a cypher pole because it's like we never made direct contact and who's who actually hypes himself up by saying i used to be considered a prospect a rival to the genius rob lucci 
So immediately he's like comparison to Ralph Lucci. After that he f fires off a fang pist pistol, which is pretty cool, which Yimbe barely dodges it. It looks like it cuts him, it grazes him. But I'm guessing it's a shockwave from his mouth because Jinbei says, I've never seen that technique before. And then Jinbei says, your situation has nothing to do with me. Who, who says you're wrong because you're a, mem you're a prime member of the Straw Hearts? Reminds me of Black Bear Past because 12 years ago he failed to guard a devil fruit that was being transported on a government ship. I was shot when Straw Hat Luffy came to prominence. The stolen gum gum fruit had been eaten. So who, who lost the, I guess, the gum gum fruit? He, he was safeguarding it and it got stolen, which ended up in Luffy, which now Luffy has. So, the tension in the fight with Who's Who and Jinbei, but more importantly, it brings up a huge revelation about Luffy because, so first off, like, the fact that the world government was safeguarding Luffy's, the, the gum gum fruit, the, okay, how did Shanks come into contact and was he the one that broke into it and stole it because you know we know he brought it along now we know it's stolen and what we don't know is why shanks was able to get away. so if it was that rare how did shanks come into contact with it and the question is why did he have it we know going to oda shanks is going to make his move this year so hopefully we'll get that reveal but that's a bombshell luffy's gum gum fruit was a lot more valuable than we originally thought also, I like how this chapter focuses on other members of the Toby Weber going against the Straw Hats. And stuff. Did you notice we did not see one iota of Robin versus Black Maria? And, and I, I said this before and I'm going to keep saying it again. When we get to that, it's going to have more focus and spotlight it should. Hopefully this turns out to be an epic fight. But also, we may learn something about the eye symbol if it has anything to do with the three eye tribes. Similar to how Sanji got up against Queen. We're learning more and more about Queen and his connection with the Judge now. A group called Mads, which I can only assume involves Vegapunk as well. Maybe including Caesar. We'll have to wait and see. So maybe we'll get more exposition on that. Plus, what that ice will mean. If it has anything to do with Three Eye Tribe. But hopefully that's where Oda goes with this. It gives, it gives us the epic Robin fight that we've been hoping before against Black Mania. Keep in mind, Brook was also there. So we didn't get to see what was going on with the support, the underlings of Black Mania. Last we saw, Brooke was already taking care of them, so hopefully that's what he's up to. Or, if nothing else, he's gone elsewhere. And we do get Black Mario versus Deacon Robin 1v1. We'll have to wait and see. It's interesting, we've got more insight into who's who now. And because he, previously he was one of the most mysterious characters in the Tubby Robo, so now it's obviously Black Mario. So, I also find it interesting in this chapter we get. We've got Queen going into hybrid form before Who's Who goes into his hybrid form. And Sasaki, I'm assuming, has his hybrid form too. Probably Black Maria. I would be surprised. And we haven't we've yet to see King in his hybrid form. Maybe he's going to maybe he's in his hybrid form against Marco. But also we haven't seen Jack in his hybrid form yet, so that's gonna be hype. Off topic, do you guys think that Rob Lucci has his own hybrid form? Because I think he does post time skip so let me know what you guys think down below i thought it was a is a decent chapter with a huge bombshell by the end of yeah, Odo teasing us with a huge bombshell with luffy's devil fruit after 1017 chapters so let me know what you guys think down below that's gonna do for me guys thanks so much for watching like the review if you did it thumbs up i appreciate that helps out the channel subscribe channel for more one piece catch you guys later thanks guys